Hey viewers, 2 Fortis here, and some really exciting news has been happening in the anime industry. So I'm just going to go ahead and get right to it, and I'm going to read it off here right from the website. But on Tuesday, March 1st, 2022, Funimation, which serves millions of anime fans, will be unifying under the Crunchyroll brand. This move will include Funimation subsidiary Wakanam as well as Crunchyroll's Verve to create one subscription service for anime fans worldwide. So this is huge news, I think, in the anime industry. Previously, you'd have to have uh, certain, certain shows are exclusive to certain platforms of viewing. So you have Crunchyroll, you have Funimation, and then you have your general regular shows uh, here in the United States. You have Netflix, you have Amazon Prime, uh, and uh, some other ones, uh, Verve, uh, which was Crunchyroll's sister site. Uh, I've never heard of Wakanam, so, or I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but if you wanted to potentially watch all the anime coming out, uh, they were exclusives on certain sites, specifically Verve, uh, Crunchyroll, and Funimation. So if you chose uh, Funimation, you might see some, some shows cross-platforming, uh, but some shows were exclusive to their platforms. And so now we have Funimation... Verve and Crunchyroll all unifying under the Crunchyroll brand. So that is really exciting. Uh, I feel like Crunchyroll had a lot of subtitled animes. They did have some dubs, um, but their main focus was the subtitles uh, directly from Japan. Uh, so they just have the subtitles on there and they would air almost as soon as the show came out. Uh, Funimation, I believe, I did not have a subscription to Funimation, so I'm not sure, but I want to say Funimation had more dubs in, in animes. Uh, one show in particular I can talk about is uh, The Promised Neverland, was a show that I was really excited for. It showed up on Crunchyroll, and I was able to watch all of season one on Crunchyroll. And I thought it was a really good show. And season two was about to come out. And the show left the Crunchyroll platform. And I believe it went on to the Funimation platform. And they showed all of season two on the Funimation platform. And I was not able to see it. So, uh, so far... On, on uh, March 1st, they already started moving some shows over to the Crunchyroll platform. So, uh, let's see here. The, uh, so moving forward, Funimation will only add new episodes of continuing series. So... Uh, they've already started to move the Funimation library over to Crunchyroll. And so I actually started watching uh, part, and I'm mostly, most of the way through uh, season two of The Promised Neverland. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, spoiler alert a little bit. Uh, it was definitely not what I was expecting so far, um, but it's still good, and I like it. So... I am really happy to see some of these shows move over. I actually did a little bit of research, mainly Wikipedia, and I just want to share some history of Funimation. So, on May 9, 1994, Funimation Productions was founded, and it was founded uh, with the a producer from the toy company, Nagafumi Hori, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your names wrong, uh, he approached his nephew and businessman Jen Fukunaga, uh, who lived in the U U.S., and said if Fukunaga, Fukunaga 
could start a production company, uh, Toy Animation would license the rights to the Dragon Ball franchise to the U U.S. So, uh, Fukunaga uh, convinced his co-worker at the time, Daniel Kokonager, to sell their family-owned feed mill. And he would, uh, Daniel would then become an investor of the Funimation Productions. So, uh, so again, in May 1994, Funimation Productions was founded. In 1998, uh, Dragon Ball Z, which is uh, the second part, uh, basically, of Dragon Ball, became very popular, which allowed Funimation to gain more anime titles. And here, a few years later, May 11th, uh, there's a lot of things that happen in between here. Um, but I'm just kind of going over the highlights here. Uh, but on May 11th, 20, 2005, Funimation was acquired by the Navare Corporation for 100.4 million and 1.8 million shares of Navare stock. So 100.4 million uh, and 1.8 million shares of Navare stock. So uh, Funimation got acquired by this Navare Corporation. And on July 31st, 2017, so this is almost a little over 10 years later, Sony Pictures Television announced that it would be, it would buy a controlling 95% stake in Funimation for 143 million. So uh, that that's kind of interesting numbers there. Um, and on August 22nd, 2017 uh, that uh, transaction was approved so now Sony Pictures Entertainment or television owns uh, Funimation and on December 9th 2020 uh, Sony Pictures Entertainment announced that it would acquire Crunchyroll for from Warner Media for a total of 1.175 billion uh, which would place the company under Funimation once the acquisition was finalized. Uh, and so uh, I don't know. I kind of did some research on Sony Pictures Television and Warner Media. There's a lot of information on both companies. Uh, so if you want to find out more about that, you can. On August 9, 2021, the acquisition of Crunchyroll was completed with Sony s stating in their press release that they would create a unified anime subscription using the anime business. Uh, and Crunchyroll confirmed uh, that Verve was included in the acquisition as well. And here we come to March 1st, 2022, announced that Funimation, Wakanam, SVOD services would be consolidated into Crunchyroll as well as Verve. Additionally, Funimation Group Global Group LLC would be renamed to Crunchyroll LLC with the Funimation brand being phased out in favor of Crunchyroll. So that is a little bit of history of Crunchyroll. Uh, I am a subscriber to Crunchyroll. Uh, you don't have to subscribe currently to view uh, some of their content. You can view it for free, uh, but you would do have to view uh, some commercials and not all of their shows are available uh, with a non-subscription service. Sometimes they might be delayed a few weeks uh, and with the subscription service, uh, so far they have a tiered subscription service which uh, all the subscription services allows you to view all of their anime content. Uh, the main difference seems to be that they also sell merchandise as well. So you can get discounts uh, depending on which level of subscription service you get. You can get discounts on merchandise, figures, uh, towels, cups, mouse pads, uh, that, that sort of thing, posters, that sort of thing. So, but I think this is really 
uh, shaking in the anime industry. And uh, basically, you can just watch everything mainly on one platform. And uh, we'll see if their subscription service is going to increase or if it's going to stay the same uh, with all these uh, new titles coming under one uh, Sony, Sony Media Entertainment or Crunchyroll. So Crunchyroll is also a site that I like to get some anime news from. Uh, they have a news feed that you can read. Uh, like I said, they also show uh, sell merchandise and they have your anime shows as well. So uh, tell me what you think in the comments below. Do you think this is a good thing for the anime industry? Are you a subscriber of Crunchyroll? And uh, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see you later. Bye.